So I got a question. It's a, a comment from uh, one of the videos I did uh, I published on YouTube. So I decided to do a video response to, to the question. And it says, I know you drive a Pojo 607. Which year would you advise someone to buy with the automatic gearbox? Um, because I can't tell you which one or which one not to buy. It's not like any of them is bad. So I can only explain the pros and cons, the negative or pos um, positive of each of them for you to have to make your choice. So uh, it didn't state which um, engine you are interested in. That's the, in fact, more like not engine the fuel type that you are interested in whether you want uh, you are interested in diesel or petrol so all those things would have because uh, um, I don't know much about diesel Pojo cars so I can only talk about the petrol so in case what you are considering is uh, diesel I'm not sure I can help you of course it is the country where you intend to use the, the car so because if you are in your country there are a lot of uh, diesel cars there, of course it will make sense to also try out the diesel. But like I said, I will only talk about what I know. So um, you are interested in Pojo 607 with automatic gearbox. Fine. For petrol engines, they have um, only two engines that use automatic gearbox and Pojo 607. And they are EW12 J4 engine with 2. is a 2.2 liter cubic capacity, uh, maximum of about 170 horsepower, there about. Uh, the V6 we have two, and that is um, ES9 J4 S and ES9 A. Uh, one is about 210 horsepower, the latter is about 211 horsepower. So, these are the only two engines. So, even though I mentioned like three, but it's more like EW12J4 and V6. Yes, it doesn't matter. The V6 have two, but I usually call the one engine because they are almost the same. No, not identical, but they are the same. So, now, which year? Um, it depends because when you talk about years, you have to look at the systems. Um, what are you interested in? Four cylinder or VCs? Some people are scared of VCs. Why some are comfortable with uh, four cylinder? However, a lot of people also are scared of the four cylinder with automatic gearbox in C07 because that four cylinder engine is EW12G4. So, I don't have any issue with it. So, as I'm concerned, of course, it has its own uh, issues, like every other car. But it's not something that I would discourage anybody from buying a Pojo car with that engine. Now, let's talk about the fuel consumption. I've not started, I've not come to the years. I'm just telling you stuff. Now, uh, now we cannot bring in the years, I think. Or oh, let's leave the years for now. EW12 and V6 consume almost the same amount of fuel. I'm not saying uh, exactly the, the same figures, but very, very close figures. So that's why most sometimes I just tell people, you can as well just buy V6 and enjoy the full power, you know, because the consumption is not that much. The difference is not much from the EW12 and the V6. And the power difference is much. So. But some people will sit tell you, oh, my mechanic tell me, tells me to run away or advise me to run for my dear life from VCs. So, I don't know. For the consumption, like I say, it's basically the same. Now, let's come to the years. From 90, no, 90, 1999, but let me just say from 2000 to early 2004. Um... You have a uh, Pojo seven that we call Z8. That's the first production or the phase one. 
I call it Zedate. Uh, you can tell the first one has a uh, the square fog front fog light. The fog lamp in the front is square in shape, kind of. It looks like that of uh, Pojo 406. While the phase two, which uh, start the production started in sometime in late 2004 to 2010. Um, the front has a round shaped fog lamp. Of course, uh, it doesn't mean once you see any Pojo 407 with uh, round fog lamp in the front, that it means it's phase two. People do the conversion. They will remove the front bumper of phase one and put the fog bumper of phase two, which will now carry the fog lamp of phase two. So but I'm just telling you for just generally well, the easiest way to identify which one and this. So you now know it's 99 or 2000. We just said 99 to 2004 is uh, phase one. Now the phase one has an electrical system with uh Pojo 406 that's Vambos. Um yeah Vambos. Even though at some point uh 406 late 406 now had partial canvas system. So yeah but basically it's canvas like the fuse bus is the same with uh Pojo 407. The the fuse bus in the engine bay is basically the same with my 407. It's exactly the same in my own 406 for this in 2000 so why that of uh, 2004 to 2010 has uh, similar or same electrical wiring or systems with Pojo 407 so um, in terms of maintenance of the two the electrical parts of the phase one and phase two Personally, I don't know, you know, when he talks about electric car, electric car is only, what are we even talking about in terms of maintenance? Is it Bob? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, these are just, the wearable parts that are supposed to maybe expect to fail, like Bob. Or fuse. Once it goes beyond that, something starts burning, then the probably there's a wiring issue with the vehicle. So... Um, let's assume, okay, it has gone beyond uh, bulb and fuses, which cost the same amount with both vehicles, both phases, to 99 to 2010. Uh, when it now comes to fuse bulbs, fuse bulbs, it due to that Z8, the first model, I will be using the code now so that it will make me easier to understand. Remember, Z8 is phase 1, which is 99 to 2004. Z9 is phase two which is uh 2004 to 2010. so the z8 uh fuse bus is like four six like i said so it doesn't have all this complex um few relays inside it just fuses that you see there if it costs it just change that's all unlike the z9 fuse bus that is a unit sealed up with uh, relays inside. If any of the relays fails, you have to change the complete fuse bus. The good part of it is changing it is not, it's not difficult. You just plug in, bump, 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 disconnect the plugs, get another new one, put plug in back, it start working. Unlike the Z8 one, like the one in 406, you can't, it's, it, the way they did it, so I can't even change it. So the only way to change it, it means you have to push out the wire out. You have to cut out the entire wires on the fuse bus and now start connecting one after the other. Trust me, it can be very, very um, disastrous if not well connected. It can be very disastrous, but it could burn your vehicle. So uh, you need an expert to change it for you. Does the, the, the Z91 fail? The one like 407? Yeah, it does fail. But most times, it's when there's a wrong connection, it could fail and you have it repaired. But easily, the good thing is it's easily available. Here in Abuja, it's available everywhere you want, you get it. It's the same fuse bus in Pojotelio 7 Phase 2. They use the same, that's a, a LO4. LO4. Uh, what's the part number? I'm trying to remember. 
something C C K. Uh, is it uh, F five hundred C K? I don't know something like that. But it ends with C K. That's the part, the project part number. Why the part number on the BSM itself, the fuse bus itself is L O four. So if you see any uh, phase two, three or seven, most of them they use the same fuse bus. So um, now the first two, first one, like I say, can the fuse bus fail? It's not supposed to. Mine, I've never even touched any fuse on that box. The one in my before is like I can say, is the same. However, why usually make uh, cause uh, the fuse box to be replaced is all these people that when a fuse caught, instead of them to replace the fuse, they will go and get wire, join on the fuse, get it to the that point that goes into the fuse box. Put tie the wire around that place so that when it now goes in, it will expand where the pin that fuse is supposed to click in. So when it now expand, after a while, it start doing partial contact. Or most especially when you now remove and put the normal fuse without that wire, it will no longer grip and um, to, uh, you know supply power to what it's supposed to do. Even when it does supply power, it may be driving of a sudden that thing or component is supplying the power will cut off. Or it will start and go. It will just be giving all kinds of problems until you'll be forced to change the fuse box. And that is a very big problem. You have to go. It's not like you see we are the one they already uh, cut out and keep for anybody to buy. You have to go where they sell complete wire. And then buy it and pay for them. Then probably you cut it yourself. Or they will have somebody to cut it for you. So it's not... You see, it's not something I wish anybody to experience. I've done it once in one six or seven Z8 and it wasn't fun as in replacing the fuse box. So it comes with its own issues. But the fuse box is cheap anyway. But you I would rather have the one that I will have to change if it fails without cutting or joining anything. So yeah, in terms of cost of replacing the fuse box, the Z9 cost more. You know, the phase two will cost more. Uh, but I'm sitting in my six or seven, and this car is about I don't know, was produced in late 2007, so and we're in 2019. It's still there, <laughs> no, no fuse has caught there. So that's what I'm saying. It's not like you're going to experience it or have it fail. So it depends on how the electrical of the car is being handled. That will determine if you will end up changing your fuse box. So that's the electrical part. Talking about the listing, the radio, um, all those things are uh, not really that relevant to some mentioning. Okay, so the mechanical part now, um, I will join both the electrical part of the engine with the mechanical part. The, the mechanical part, we will talk about the engines now, unlike the electrical part, the interior of all those all that, the, you know, it's, it doesn't matter which engine. But this time, talk about the engine, EW12J4 and the V6, the electrical parts that controls them. <sighs> now, mechanically, EW12 and EW and V6, they are both durable engines. Um, for economy, it's almost the same. Uh, cost of maintenance, um, they consume the oil, oh engine yeah, oil is basically the same. Uh, of course, if this is just take a little bit more than the EW12. If EW12 is, I think, is about 4.5 liter, liters, why this is about 4.7 liters, mass 5 liters. So you can't really say you're going to spend more in buying engine oil yeah, that will go into the VCs. It's the same for you're going to buy 5 liters for both of them. Then, as they are now changing, you now measure. So eventually, it's, it's that same five liters. So the same thing, the same recommended engine oil, total was 9,000, 5W40, depending on where you are. Even you can use 5W30, um, or you know, some, I don't even think, even 10W40 is even recommended for EW12, can't remember. So those are the factors. So basically it's the same. Oil filter, the same. Now, um, there are areas where EW12 will cost more in maintenance. 
than the VCs. That is the motorized throttle body. The motorized throttle body of the EW12 is not as durable as that of the VCs. The VCs, trust me, you can use the car all to your the, your ownership with one, two, five, three, even more than five years or ten years without even having to touch that motorized throttle body. It's very, very durable. Does, has it, uh, does it fail? Of course, uh, it do fail. Uh, my my first VC one has failed once. And uh, how much did I bought it? Very cheap, was it? There were 8,000 or 10,000. That was some years ago. Uh, that was the first time it failed since they produced that car in 2000. So you can imagine, almost close to about 15. It failed after about 15 years or 16 years. I replaced it and it has been like that. Very cheap because it's very cheap because of low demand. It hardly fails, like I said. EW12, no, it's not that durable. Um, I, I, can't, I don't want to go into what usually makes it to fail, even when uh, it's not supposed to. Uh, it's so many variables. So, and it's expensive because of the, probably the demand. Uh, second hand, like the one I bought 8,000 or 10,000 was a used one. And but for used one for EW12, right now it costs between 35 to 40,000. Yeah. 35 to 40,000. You may get it cheaper than that, but I don't think it will go anything less than 25,000. So you are looking at almost just average of 40,000. That depends on your bargain. And still, after a while, it will fail. I know a lot of people that buy used one, it doesn't last after a while to fail. That's why I don't even recommend second hand for EW12. New one, this new one costs about 75,000. You know, so like I said, this is where it now costs more. Than the VCs. So, but my advice is I always tell people when you buy a Pojo car with that engine, see, don't say, don't try to go around about it. Look for money, if possible, see if you can get that money out of the before you make the purchase of the car. Buy new one, buy brand new one and keep. Give it that peace of mind. Anytime you need to travel, put it in your boots. If the eventually fails, you put it, you just mount the new one. It's, you don't, it's a very simple thing to replace. You don't need a technical person to do it. You replace it, once you put it, you are looking at, I don't know, maybe thousands of kilometers or years or few, some years or few years before. So in that case, you have peace of mind. It may serve you for a very long time, probably before you decide to let the car go. You know, so... That's the only thing, but in terms of payment, yeah, it's expensive, 75. This is, new one, is it available? Here in Nigeria, no, it's not available, because are, even if it's there, nobody will even buy, the demand is low. Because even when you buy the second hand, it will still last you for many years, because like I said, it's very, very durable, working. So that's a good thing about this is. Uh, other parts of this is may cost more, like spark plug of this is, it cost you close to 30,000 to replace. Even though it lasts you for like 80,000 kilometers, but when you're changing it, it will cost a uh, big some money. While EW12J4, I think mass maybe 8,000 or maximum 10,000 naira to replace the four plugs for the either. So, however, you, you are meant to replace it every 40,000 kilometers. So, is it five years? Three years? No. Timing kit uh, is very available for E12. Uh, timing belt is there in those stores. Even the complete timing kit for EW12 is there. For V6, it's not. So it's only the timing belt that you can get there. Timing belt and the auxiliary belt. That's that what you can get. You can get the, 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 the lolas and the tensioner. The timing lolas and tensioner, they are not here. So, um, so in that case, you might say, okay, um, it's easier to maintain the timing kit or the timing chamber of the E12 than the VCs. The VCs means when you want to change the timing belt, you check the rollers and tensioner. If they appear weak, you have to look for maybe a used one that is still good and put before you put the new belt. If you now want to buy the complete new timing kit, you have to now search for it outside Nigeria, probably from Europe. And uh, it can be quite expensive if you are buying it complete, new, the complete kit. It costs close to 100000 Yes, 100000 to buy the complete kit. 
Only for the time, you know, even more self. I went to EW12. It cost it also maybe like 40, 47, or 50,000 to buy the timing belt, uh, timing uh, belt tensioner and the timing ruler. Uh, you know, just between 30 to 50,000 if you're buying the complete. Okay, uh, moving on. I'm just making sure it's all take note to know which one. I'm not in your pocket to know which one I can afford to maintain. Because you are saying which one. No, I can't tell you which one. You have to choose. Um, this is having other issues. It's all peculiar issues like uh, the the cylinder cover, engine cylinder head covers, or the rocker cam covers. There are about four of them. Over time, they tend to leak oil once the car starts going beyond 400 or too close to 200,000 kilometers. They start leaking and uh, the sails are not available. In fact, one of them said you can't even, the sail is permanently on it, so it's not like you can get replace it. About two, the metal part, the metal covers. So the only thing you now rely on is LTV ga gasket maker or what mechanic is called here gum or gasket gum. So if you have. Of course, if you get a very good one and use it to save that place, but it will last you for years. Unfortunately, here in Nigeria, it's difficult to get a good one. So you end up doing it periodically, depending on the quality of the one they use for you. It may last one month, two months, three, six, or close to one year before it starts leaking oil again. And uh, you have to receive it again. Remove all of that. If you don't, oil will start going into your uh spark plug chamber touching your uh, what's it called your uh, ignition coils and the rest so so it's something you have to be doing another thing issue with the vc that's talking about their own peculiar issues is our fuel in nigeria affects the combustion uh, over every now and then the car will may tend to misfire and when it does all you need to do is remove the spark plugs Start from the spark plugs. You check, you see brownish soot inside them. Over here, that's what kind of thing you get because of our fuel. You, the, the soot, you just change it to brown, one kind horrible looking deposit inside the plug. You have to clean them off. Uh, also, clean out, you know, check the electrode gap that is 1 mm for VCs. Uh, EW10J4 is 0.90 mm. Uh, you know, you clean it off, put it back, some pepper that spot where the coil sit on the uh, the ignition, the spark plug, some pepper it, put it back, remove the injectors, service or clean them, flush them, put them back. It goes away for months, depending on how you use the car. But on the other side of this is once you park the car for a long time, the next time you start it, uh, it may not be the plug that you not deal, but the injectors. The four injector VCs, they are very sensitive. They are not as porous as EW10, J4 own, or EW12, you know, other four things that own. The VC saw is very, very uh, sensitive and not as that big too. So uh, once they uh, for drives into it, they tend to uh, block some of those so uh, they will not spray very well. So you need to remove and service them, flush them, put them back, they start working well. Unlike the ew 12 j for may never even have that issue for a very long time. The oil leakage thing is not a big thing. It takes time before that one. Luckily, for EW12, the sale is available. You can always buy the sale and the change. I don't know. I've never made the purchase here in Nigeria. To, but I know somebody that have imported it for. So the sale is available. That's if the cover engine head cover start leaking you can just change the seal or you use the gum that they, we use on vcs but it's a vcs has four covers the ew12 have uh, two covers uh, so you know it's, it's neither here or there now trans let's talk about the transmission you said it's automatic so that point going to manual uh the ew12 j4 in phase one and phase two, that's Z8 and Z9. You use the same gear, automatic gearbox. That is ZF 4 HP 20. The same gearbox, four speed. Why this is uh, phase one also use the same automatic gearbox in EW12. Yes, the same automatic gearbox in EW12. Why the phase two now use uh, different gearbox AMCs? That's six speed automatic gearbox. 
Um, in terms of fuel consumption, for those automatic gearboxes, uh, the EW12 consume almost the same. Uh, both phase two and phase one. You know, we have automatic gear with fire consumption, it's basically the same because it's the same engine and same gearbox, so it's not like for VCs. The phase two, no, the phase one has four speed automatic gearbox, which is the same in EW12. Why the phase two has six speed? But my observation is phase one VCs consume less fuel when you drive it in the city. Why on high when on highway the phase two consume less? Reason being the first one. Uh, well, I wouldn't know why the first one consume less in the city, but I do know why the first two consume less on highway because it's six speed. So at that time, when you're highway, uh, you know the RPM will be low, lower than the four speed one. Once you go close to about probably from 80 kilometers per hour upward, of course the phase two will consume less because the RPM will be low. It has six speed against four speed, so uh, that's the thing. Now the gearbox maintenance honestly is easier and cheaper to maintain the phase two Z9 automatic gearbox. The oil, the ATF recommended is available. The gearbox is used by so many other vehicles, not just Pojo, Japanese and the rest. So, uh, the, if you don't find the recommended one by Pojo, you can see the recommend, one recommended by other brand of cars in their own vehicles, which is the same gearbox anyway. So, you can also use those ATF as long as it's the original one. The, like in Nigeria, uh, one of the good ATF for the AMCs, uh, Z9 automatic gearbox is uh, what is it? Um, Total Fluidmatic uh, MVLV. Total Fluidmatic MVLV is available. It's about 35 a liter. Um, you know, so it's easily accessible from Total Fuel Stations here. Okay, you know, so you can always because the truth is, automatic car uh, costs higher to maintain. As far as I'm concerned, project car is concerned, you spend more in maintaining the automatic gearbox than manual. So if you are going for one, uh, since you now have option of which one uh, uh, that you can easily maintain, not that you won't be servicing them, no, you have to manual, you don't need to touch it, the automatic you have to, otherwise it will fail. So for you to be servicing it, you can easily get access to the ATF for the Z9 than the other one, which for now in Nigeria, it's only PAN that sells it. That ATM for the Z8, the, four, the one with four speed automatic gearbox in E12 and the V6 phase one. Even phase two VCs use that same ATM. No, phase two E12 use that same ATM. Sold by PAN. Unfortunately, it's not always available. It's not always available for the past three months now, going to four months, if not more, I don't even remember. PAN Nigeria, it doesn't have the ATF. So they import, you finish, well, if I know it has finished, you wait for another four months or there about before it becomes available. If you don't use any other ATF, you're on your own. Not saying the other ATF may not work, but like I say, it's there, you're on your own. You, you, can tell, you can tell that most people will tell you avoid put your automatic gearbox that they always fail in. Or uh, having one problem or the other. Most times it's called because of the wrong ATF they put in there. So, um, they are on your own. That's what I mean. So, it's better to use what is recommended until you find a very good alternative. So, in that case, uh, phase two makes sense. Since you are after automatic, phase two makes sense. It's C speed, so uh, it's less uh, stress on the engine, you know on C speed if you are not into performance let me point it out if you are not into performance uh, it will make more sense with the V6 uh, phase 2 if you want for EW12 automatic like I say uh, whether phase 1 or phase 2 the maintenance cost will be much higher or more stressful based on the recommended ATS not easily available um, Suspension, this is cost more to, to, to maintain 
the way your shock absorber feels. I'm not talking about other parts of suspension in terms of stabilizer link. All six or seven, uh, whether V6, E12, phase one or phase two, the stabilizer link, front stabilizer link is the same in four or six, identical, not even similar, it's identical. Uh, so even the brake, the brake pad and brake disc of uh, 407, 607 phase 1 either with EW12J4 engine and automatic gearbox. The brake pad and brake disc is the same in 406 with EW10 to V6 engine. It's the same. But it's from V6, it now changes. V6 has a different brake, uh, brake disc and brake pad. Most of them use Brembo for phase one. Now for Z9 phase two, uh, the brake pedal, the brake disc, and the uh, brake um, pad in, four, in Z9, V6 and E12 is exactly the same in Pojo 407. V6 and Pojo and E12, they use the same brake disc and dinner. So it's like they're buying Pojo 407 pad and disc. If when you, when does, if it fails. So, of course, you cannot tell, see that um, the, first, uh, the Z9 uh, braking system components co will cost you more than the, first, uh, the Z8. That's the first one. Um, so, that's the most important thing. Don't get, let the brake disc fail on you. It's not even that expensive, about 20 something thousand. So, because even for C so original one is also around that with something thousand. So sometimes I may not I don't even know. It's only brake pad that is very expensive. Uh, like for C so original brake pad is about uh, that's six oh seven phase uh, phase one EW twelve brake uh pad is about twelve thousand original mass. Why that of uh, the Z nine both E twelve and the V six Z nine is about Give or take about between 18 to 22,000. So, yeah, you have it. Electronics, that's some electronics. It makes sense to have Z9. Z9 is an improvement of Z8. You know, so, I can't tell you to buy Z8 if you want a more modern. The Z8, the interior looks dated. I'm not saying may, it's because of that, I don't buy it, but I know what I'm talking about. Like, look at the dashboard. The Z9 make more sense with the red, the, the screen, the display, uh, the red, the radio. You know, Z9 has more gadgets. Like for example, the Z9 by standard, you don't you, all you need is press your remote. The boot opens. There's a switch there on the boot lid. Press the boot switch. The boot, boot closes by itself. You can close it manually though. But I'm telling you, just uh, the features you have, you may not get in Z8. The only Z8 I have it, there are just very few. I don't, most, mostly for the ones produced in 2003. Are the ones that have that uh, locking and uh, opening and closing of uh, boots for the, the Z8 for C607 that is standard in Z9. So, um, so many things. I mean, Z9 in terms of electric car. Or gadgets. Let me just say, terms of gadgets, it make more sense. Uh, Z9. If you buy the the one that comes with LD4, the LD4 means the ones uh, radio with smaller screen on top. Uh, most of them have a uh, Bluetooth connectivity. Once you come into your car, it connects with your, your phone Bluetooth. Um, the other one with LT3, the one with navigation screen, big navigation screen, it has um. You know, you can watch your video there. So the car has to be stationary. Uh, but you have to slot in the distance. I don't think uh, it, does, it doesn't play DVD. Uh, it's only RT4 that plays DVD. Um, it plays MP3. Unlike the Z8, there's no CD in the front. Every, every CD player is at the back. The only thing you can play in the front is uh, uh, cassette, you know. The ones that have cassette, they don't have a GSM slot. But for Z9, uh, the RT3 radio system has a GSM car slot. So, slot it in. So most people end up, don't, they don't use it anyway. Uh, so, Z9 make more sense. 
when it comes to gadgets, interior, or even the exterior. Z9 also have a rear parking aid, which uh, most Z8 don't have. That's the first one, they don't have it. Uh, maybe even if they, I'm here to drive one that has it, that's my point. So eventually you may find one that may have it, but uh, it's here and here or there. So, but by standard, all of Z9 have the, at least I have driven, I've seen, have that rear parking aid. That's once you switch, you switch to uh, reverse, the sensors will become active so if there's any car behind you or any object as you are reversing you start warning you the closer you get the louder the beeping sounds and it will also come up on the screen showing you how close you are getting to that object with the warning sign there are some z9 as well which is another good point comes with both the rear and the front parking aid yes, so i mean it, the, it's not even the front one is no longer parking aid so I mean, if you are driving if you start getting close to a vehicle, maybe you're on a hold up, you are starting, you know, all these things, people brush their bumpers, you, you prevent you from doing that. Once you start getting close to objects, you start warning you immediately that, hey, that's too close. You know, you should come up on the screen, warn you, you step back, you press on your brake and stop your car from hitting another car. Because, uh, you know, sometimes you may not see, of course, you won't see the bumper, so you may think uh, you, your car is not yet close to the object you are coming close to or the vehicle before you only for you to hit it but that sensor helps so all this is what you enjoy in z9 so logically it makes more sense to buy z9 except that z9 is uh, more expensive to purchase not that expensive per se but like what i mean generally it costs more than z8 to buy especially if you are buying foreign use not the one they use in nigeria even the one they use in Nigeria, if it's still in good condition, yes, it costs more than Z8. Now, where I uh, will tell you be careful with Z9 is if you know you are the type, I'm saying this loud and clear, if you know that you are the type that likes abusing cars, especially electrically, stay away from Z9. Just even the Z8, yeah, you, you, you may forgive you uh, one or two things, but the Z9 will not. Stay away from Z9. Z9 is just like 407, electrically everything, the BSM, the BSI, the GECU, basically they are the same. Stay away from Z9. But if you know you are the type that like, don't like abusing the electric and want all the wire and everything to stay the way they are. If there's a problem, if it gives you warning, that's a good thing of audio can. It will warn you, you see what the issue is. Put a scanner. Sometimes from the screen you know exactly what uh, you need to do. Sometimes you just to tell you, hey, you need to scan the car to know why this one is coming up. You scan it, you tell you what it is. Or you take it to someone that knows, even if you have to pay more, someone that understands the car. That I'm giving it to both side, anyhow, anybody you see that has caused itself a literature, you give it your car. Then figure out why this is happening, why the other one is not happening. You're gonna hate yourself. I'm being honest now. Because a lot of people have been comparing, yeah, for seven, six or seven is very problematic. But one thing uh, stupid people don't ever ask is have you ever bothered to find out why how the guy was using that car? How was he maintaining it? He will give it to somebody he knows that does not know how modern vehicles work. They just use cut and join wire to do their diagnosis. At the end of the day, start blaming the vehicle, you know that is electrically controlled. So that's what I'm saying. If you know you are not the type that is willing to spend more, is that any policies that say you're buying nice and old car, you can't get a brand new one unless you go to Pan to know if there's one they didn't sell because they stopped the production in 2010. We are in 2019. So imagine looking for a new one. Even if you find it, it's going to be hard. So if you are looking for any one in the open market, it's going to be a used one. So don't expect that used car, something not to fail at some point. It's going to fail. But are you willing to not mess up the car because a one in come up? You decided you don't want to spend uh, it's just a little more amount of money to find out the issue and fix. You take it to somebody that will collect five naira or penny from you, only for him to render that car useless, mess it up. So if you're not the type, forget Z9. The same thing goes to for the 407 user upward. The, the same, same, same system so this is a warning for you so you know whether your financial strength 
or how good how you want to appreciate your car but if you don't get value your car very well you're going to do it anyway you see you have to give it to any house mechanic or the mango tree electrician anybody that calls and say electrician and then you come back and start complaining that you are misled that's my point so um but another reason why uh, Z9 may make sense I know this video is taking longer now it's almost uh, 40 minutes I don't care even if you don't appreciate this video somebody else in future may watch it and understand the differences between the Z8 Z9 phase 1607 and phase 2607 uh, 99 to 2004 607 and 2004 to 2010 for uh, 607 so you know the difference and now make up your own mind the pros and cons of each to know which one you can deal with or you can live with i can't tell you that this one don't have any problem i can't tell you that because it's a lie anybody that tells you such is lying to you it's not possible so another reason why z9 make more sense to me is um the abs sensors you know over time they will fail especially the road, our road condition in nigeria i don't know if you live in nigeria Road condition in Nigeria do affect the ABS sensors. It's jumping all those gallops, doing all those. After a while, they will fail. So, but the Z8, I don't think the new one is available. In fact, I even tried from Pan, they don't have it. I don't think they ever did so. So, getting brand new uh, uh, ABS sensor for Z8 Phase 1607 is going to be difficult for you if you are sourcing for it in Nigeria. So, you may end up only buying second hand. Second hand, do you know that they will also are beating Nigeria are like beating them? So it may not even work. Even if it works, it's just a question of time to fail again. Why the phase two is the same, even though the part numbers are different, but it's the same with 407. If I if I go to market, I don't even tell them, ah, do you have a uh, ABS sensor with uh, for Z9? I just tell them, give me 407 uh, ABS sensor. It's just the same thing. Put it, and it's uh, very much available. Fake ones are there, online new ones are like, okay are there, original new ones are there. You can always buy the one you can afford. That's the truth about it. So it will save you so much stress because you need. Since if you are going for manual, I would have said okay, you may not worry about it. But automatic, it will it will mess you up if your ABS is not working well. So that you need to make sure you can afford it doesn't cost so like here in abuja only new one that works is about six thousand naira. and not like abs sensor phase every year it may last you for three four years or there before the one one will come so each of the ways has the sensor so one may fail this year the other one may take like another year or most before it packs up it all depends on usage you know so <coughs> that's the thing so some z pass for example, you can get a brand new BSM and the BSI of Z9. Why Z8? You can't. It's not there. I don't show a, even pan up. I said they don't sell brand new Z8 um, few, uh, BSI unit. So you end up with second hand. And second hand, in fact, the Z8 itself, you can't even open it. You can't even do all this thing they do in Project 406 uh, BSI, like remove the security bypass all the no you can't so you'll be forced to buy the complete kit with the ng ecu and the key so they said that you know it's there 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 i don't know so z9 makes more sense to me but z9 when it comes to electric car is very sensitive it doesn't like any any user that abuse cars if you are the type if you know you can't handle it maybe your environment you don't have anybody that can really deal with it just stay away from me maybe go for z8 you know, Z8 is just like 406, so we, the electric at that time is still not as complex as where when they started producing 307, 407, or that. When I mean complex, I don't mean uh, complicated. It just means, you know, all systems connect to each other more than when they were during the time of 406. So if, one, if you mess up one system, it will render the other ones useless. That's where I'm going. You can drive for the 607 Z9 for years or months without anyone inside coming up. And if it comes up, it will tell you exactly what it is. You deal with it. The parts are easily available. So, now you know, now, uh, okay, all this thing I explained, look at, like I'm saying it now, it will make more sense for somebody to go for Z9. 
Now, at least now you understand. So that it will be like I just said it, go and buy it without any question asked, without any understanding why I said it, you watch. So now you know the cost implications or what you, you, you expect if you choose to buy Z8 or Z9. Same thing with the engine. If you choose to do this, fine, to do the, you know, there are some parts that may cost more to keep it to replace. Why this one, you may not need to replace part, but uh, every now and then it may be leaking oil. Not everybody, not everybody may like to deal with that kind of issues. You know, so get to understand your car. Even as I'm explaining all these things now, once you get any of them, you already have understanding of the vehicle. And this is what some people will say, well, we are complaining. At least about five, I won't lie to you guys, about five people have either called, same message, they oh, I'm always, my video is always too long, I'm always dancing around the bush, uh, not getting straight to the point. I'm supposed to limit my video to five minutes or talk, otherwise I'm, I'm making it boring, so are people who come back to watch. Any person that really want to learn, uh, look at all how many minutes I spent saying all these things, and the other person, some other person will sit down and say it's meaningless. This is human. I mean, Nigerians are. I don't even understand them. So uh, I hope it makes sense. Of course, I can't cover everything. It's just off of my head that I'm saying some of these things. So if you have more questions, you ask. I'll make a time to make the video and post. And um, you know. Yeah, basically that's all, that's all. Uh, so, in terms of power, maybe I didn't mention that in terms of power, E12, I, don't, I, won't, be, I won't lie to you. You may think because I'm uh, power, I'm into power, that I'm, I'm being biased. E12 make more sense in 607 in manual transmission. Five speed, the Z8 has 5 speed manual. Why Z9 has 6 speed manual? If you drive any of them, you understand what I mean. The car, the, that's where the engine, power of the engine comes out. But that 4HP20, yeah, it makes it, but at some point it becomes sluggish. For me, it doesn't bring out the engine power. The only way for you to not feel the power of that engine is to press the throttle down to the floor. So in terms of uh, uh, 407, uh, 607 Z8 V6 and the uh, Z9 V6, the one that make more sense to me is, uh, I don't even know how to put it. For example, let me say like this. Z9 V6 has six-speed automatic, which is for fuel economy. Z8 V6 has four-speed automatic, which is for performance. However, um, the Z8 four-speed one, it, uh, I would say I will get. It's more perform. It, it performs more than the Z9, which is six speed. However, the Z9. Uh, do I even put it? Okay, the uh, Z8, the one with four speed, is more aggressive than the Z9. But the one with Z8, because if you get, you know, they do. I don't know whether it's just because of AT or just because of the transmission. They are not as reliable. I don't know. Let's not, not just say reliable as that of the Z9, the, the C-speed. So, the C-speed one, it works. It performs. Are, so, honestly, sometimes I'll be like, wow, it's as if I'm this new, uh, something else is now in the vehicle, driving the car. As in the way the transmission shifts, very, very good. Only for him to one day, you know, press it down, you may not respond when you want it. So kind of make it look like as if the four speed one performs better. Maybe because this one has more than uh, has up to six speed, so sometimes it gets confused. You may not when you now want where you usually show that side when you want performance, you push it down for him to perform. It becomes confused. You may not know which gear to select. And then let on it to go in and select. So um, it all depends. So E12 V6 doesn't matter for consumption, basically the same. So I'm not I won't tell you buy this or don't buy that so okay that's all for tonight oh that's all for today so if i have more questions just post it on any pojo car or on 607 i'll make a time and explain so this is the kenna 351 monk signing out